Hi guys, my name is Emily East and I'm the recruitment coordinator for Four Oaks Family Connections in the Des Moines service area. And we're putting together a series of interviews um, highlighting different resources that our foster families might come in contact with. So you guys can click on these videos and just get a little bit of information about them. Um, today we're gonna talk about CASA and would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi everybody, my name is Dawn Gert. I am the program coordinator for the CASA program out of Dubuque, Iowa. Yeah, excellent, thanks. Um, we're gonna start with a really obvious question. What is CASA? <laughs> what is it CASA, for and what do they do? CASA actually stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. Our CASAs are volunteers in the community. So they come from all different walks of life, all different ages, cultural backgrounds, um, genders. Um, and they are specially trained to act as reporters for the judge, so to speak. Um, their job is to gather all of the information specific to the child or children in a case to make sure that when the judge is making decisions on a case, he has all of the needed information uh, to make the choices in the best interests of the kids in his care. Yeah, great. And so, Don, what I'm hearing you saying is when uh, a foster family comes into a case, there's a lot of people involved. Um, and some people are focused on the whole family plan yep. and other people are, you know, and the foster parent is, is focused on the child. But I hear you saying that CASA is really focused on those children in care um, and that's their, their number one priority and what they're really working towards and working with. Correct. We actually get a court order from the judge giving us permission to gather all information from the children, whether or on the children, whether it be school, um, their pediatrician or physician, um, counseling, therapy, um, BHIS services, if they do any type of occupational or physical therapy. Our court order means that we can contact all of those places to get updates to make sure that all of the children's needs are being met. Right, so along with that court order, any foster parent, Correct. you would be within that bubble of confidentiality. Yes. Right, because Correct. that court order, all of our foster parents are able yes. to share that information freely with you. Yes, we follow very strict confidentiality in who we can talk to and exchange information with. One of the things that's usually the, sometimes the most frustrating um, in regards to that court order is that court order, court order gives us information to get and gather all of that information. However, we have strict confidentiality, confidentiality about who we can provide information. Sure. Um, so unfortunately, while we're gathering all this information, um, we're very limited on what we can share in regards to a case. Which in some ways is really comforting for a foster family as well. It is. Because they know that you can, they can share that and you can be, that CASA worker can be a trusted yes. person with that, with that story of that child, which is kind of a precious thing to share, you know what I mean? And so knowing Absolutely. that that's a trustworthy source is really helpful information, I feel like. It's just important to me that foster parents realize we're not able to give them a lot of information right. on the case, um, which can be frustrating because um, they'll ask questions and unfortunately, sometimes we have to tell them, hey, I, you know, I really can't answer that for you. I'm gonna need you to contact your VHS worker or the child's attorney or something like that to get that information. And I just want foster parents to know that's not because we don't want to include them in those conversations. It's just the way the law is written regarding you know, who we can share that information with. Yeah, that's good to know. That's really helpful. Can you talk a little bit about what kind of training does a CASA worker um, go through? You know, who is, who are CASA workers and, and a little bit about that? Absolutely. So one of the huge goals in recruitment of our CASAs uh, right now locally is to really get um, CASAs from diverse age groups, cultural backgrounds, um, as well as like um, what their specialties, their employment, um, their environment, things like that. So our CASAs come from all walks of life, all ages. Um, we have retired teachers, retired speech therapists, but we also have um, local business people, um, young parents, older parents, um, people who are retired from their current positions, um, varied walks of life. Um, they come to CASA as volunteers, so these are not paid positions, um, which is really cool when you think about it, that these are kids, these are, um, volunteers who really just want to see the best for kids. They're not getting paid to do the work that they do. They go through 30 hours of initial training when they first become CASAs. And that 30 hours covers everything from what is a CASA, how did the program come about, to what does the legal system look like, um, who are all the players, which again is something that you know your foster parents are all trying to keep straight as well. Um, 
what do we need to be looking for? So developmental ages and stages for the children that they're working with. Um, and obviously, as you can imagine, and I'm sure you tell your foster parents this, we can't train them for everything that might come up. Um, so we also have a good support system so that as things come up, they can get the needed information. Um, the role of the, the CASA is then to keep in regular contact with their child and we encourage them to try and see and communicate with the child or children on their cases in a variety of different settings. So they might reach out and, and see the child at the foster home, um, and then the next visit, maybe they're gonna go when there's a scheduled interaction with, their, with the child and their biological parents. Um, they might go have lunch with the child at school. Um, so really they're gonna be trying to see that child in a, in a variety of different settings. Right, so a, a foster parent might interact with a CASA worker when they're coming to visit that child. They might ask to come even to the, the foster home, something like that is what Correct. you're saying, as well yep. as the things that you mentioned. Where yep. are the other places that a foster parent might interact with a CASA worker? Um, if a foster parent would be attending court hearings, okay. uh, the CASA is always present at court hearings. They also are expected to be present at family team meetings. Um, which I think are now called child safety conferences. <laughs> sure. Um, so you would likely see the CASA at those types of meetings if there's any staffings. Um, sometimes there's more informal staffings with, let's say, DHS workers, um, guardian at items, um, and CASAs usually try to attend those if, if it's about, you know, a child's behavior, um, maintaining the child's placement, or trying to um, secure, um, a, you know, the child's placement. Um, in a foster home or with relative placement, um, and then again at the court hearings. Right, right. And so um, you hit on this a little bit that uh, CASA is a safe place for foster parents to share information. Yep. What mm -hmm. kind of information should our foster parents be sharing? Like what is really helpful for that, for our foster parents to communicate with CASA? And also what's the purpose of that? Like how, you know, sharing yes. that, like how does that information like affect yep. the case moving forward? So our CASAs during part of that 30 hour training, I should also add, they do 12 hours of continuing education each year as well, so that they're constantly getting updated on, again, if there's new policies, procedures, um, new legislation, such as Families First, as well as um, different areas that they might not have experience in, domestic violence, sexual assault, um, substance abuses, mental health, things like that. Sure. Um, so when they reach out to the foster family um, via phone, via email, during a sit down visit, the things that they're gonna to wanna to know are, um, how is the child doing in their placement? Especially if there's been any changes. Um, remember that our CASAs are gonna check in repeatedly throughout the life of the case. And what the judges and the county attorneys like to see from CASAs is how things are going over time. So they wanna know, how was the child when they first came to the foster family? Um, what you know concerns have come about since then? What things have improved? Um, what are the child's strengths? Um, are there needs that the foster family has or that the foster family believes that the child has that are not being met? Mm -hmm. um, the foster family should be prepared to give updates in regards to if there's been any recent um, health, medical um, appointments, you know, who they're seeing, when the next appointment is. We need to get some of that, you know, factual box checking type stuff of, you know, recent appointments, up to date on immunizations, that kind of stuff. Um, but more importantly, what we really want to know is just overall, how is the child doing? Uh, the foster family at that time is spending probably the most in seeing um, before school, after school, before visits, after visits. Um, they also can be prepared to share with the CASA, um, what is the child saying about the case? What are they saying about their comfort level at the foster home? What are they saying about how they're feeling about interactions that they might be having? Um, you know, with biological families or um, their biological parents. Those are all the things that a CASA is going to want to check in on um, because then what happens is they make all of these check-ins and usually there's three to six months between review hearings, you know, at court. Um, so what they're doing is they're making, all, they're checking in with all of these people in between court hearings and then they're compiling that information and sending a report that goes straight to the judge um, before every court hearing. Um, that again, just talks about what are the strengths, what are the concerns. The CASA also makes recommendations, um, similar to what DHS and the um, guardian at litem makes for the judge, um, for him to review on what they think is in the best interest of the child. So the CASA might make recommendations in regards to placement, 
um, in regards to services that they feel the child needs, um, recommendations in regards to, um, not necessarily recommendations, but also could bring to the judge's attention if, again, if their services are something that are missing um, that the foster family feels are important. Right, so what I kind of hear you say, sort of in summary, is that um, the role of the foster parent is really to share all that information with the CASA worker. Right. And then the CASA worker is just another person to be eyes and ears to make sure that the needs of that child are getting communicated with the judge so that that judge, whenever a decision is made in court, that that decision is made um, based on lots of accurate information. <laughs> And, and that that Correct. judge can get a, a real picture, um, especially on behalf of the child of, of what's going on in the case. And like you said at the beginning, there's a lot of different people that are coming in and out in the case. Um, the best part of the CASA is um, our major and main focus is just on that child. So it's really important for me to instill in my CASAs that they're bringing forth the most recent and comprehensive information on that child because we don't have to worry about maybe what the parents are doing or you know what other services are taking place or not taking place. Our focus is strictly um, on that child or the children in that case. Yeah. We also want to be seen as um, something of a resource for our foster parents. Mm -hmm. um, there's something um, that is needed. Like right now, I know a lot of our CASAs are working with foster families as our DHS and the um, FSS workers on, you know, making sure that they have everything that they need, you know, to provide for Christmas or getting them hooked up with resources in the community. Um, I know we've worked with foster parents who have needed gosh knows kids grow fast and kids don't often come to foster families with a, a you know a big suitcase full of clothes that they're going to grow into um, so i know that some of our casas have worked with foster families again other people provide these resources as well but to find them you know where can they go and get new clothing or new coats and hats and shoes and, and things like that to really be um, a resource yeah, that's all so, so helpful information. Um, is there anything else, just any kind of message that you want to send, um, send all of our foster parents at this time? Um, anything I just to cover? Say, I, well, I just want to say thank you, because obviously um, I have been the CASA coordinator for a year and a half, but prior to that I worked in the child welfare system for five and a half years as well. Um, so I've worked with foster parents for quite a while, and I know um, that it is a difficult job and there are all of these different people that come in and out of your life and you're trying to do your very best job um, to care for the kids and I really hope that you'll see the CASA as an ally in that um, because again these are volunteers who have chosen um, to be here you know to try and be be a voice for these kiddos especially in the juvenile court system um, so please look at them as an ally because we certainly respect um, and appreciate what the foster parents are doing yeah, that's a great message. We, I feel like people can't, foster parents can't hear enough thank yous for the Absolutely. things they're doing. And so I think our foster, that's a really important message. I think foster parents can often get lost in the shuffle and, and yeah. just know that the people that are providing these resources are really thankful for the work that they're doing, I think is a great message. So thanks for sharing that. All right. Well, again, this is Dawn with CASA, and she has been able to give us a little bit more information about what that might look like and what, um, how you might interact with the CASA worker. So I hope this has been a helpful resource to all of our foster parents, and um, we'll go ahead and, and sign off. But thank you, Dawn, so much for being with us. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Emily. Bye-bye.